attorneys have a ton of knowledge about ta talent and 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 what do you mean like what what are you covering as it relates to the talent stack Yes, so the Turn Talent Stack was originally developed by the creator of the Dilbert Common Strip, uh, Common Strip who, who's a client of mine. Scott Adams is his name, and he, he's a, a customer of the ghost publishing experience that I've, I've talked about. The idea of this so good they call you a fake business, there's, there's two main thrusts here. The first one is that people have been asking me to write my own nonfiction book for years now years now, probably right around book 40 or 50. Dude, you should be writing your own books. You need to be the one who's writing nonfiction books, not for every last CEO of the you know, Inc. 5000 or, or Fortune 500. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. So I have a few thousand more books I need to write myself first, <laughs> perhaps. Anyway, I realized I could not write the most obvious book. The obvious book for a ghostwriter to write is the book that every ghostwriter writes. Consider the books that Scribe Media has produced for themselves. Consider the books that every self-publisher and professional book writer has released. What do they all talk about? How to write and publish your book. Am I, from my perspective, that is a, a bad idea. That's a bad idea. It's a self-serving one. So perhaps it's useful in that regard. But it does not have standalone value. It does not have a shelf life of 20 plus years. It is a free lead magnet that you're kind of paying for. So it doesn't have inherent value in and of itself. I prefer to produce books that are in that 99th percentile of persuasion. And so I realized I had to go further than say, Joshua Lysak's guide to writing books, because that would be terrible. So I realized, what is the real value that I offer authors? Well, I've just described it. It's what happens before you decide to write a book. It's the documentation of your unique set of experiences, skills, credentials, Yes, your, your talents that you have, that you have demonstrated, you can use to help clients. So perhaps you are, oh, I just realized I've, I've also done for um, uh, books for criminal injury, uh, or criminal, both, like, both like criminal related injuries. Yes, so as I talk about this, I realize I, I've, I've actually written more books on law than I thought. This is the strange thing about being me, is you completely forget how many books that you've written and what they, what they are because there, there have been so many of them. And you realize, oh, yeah, I did write for that one guy who won 100 plus cases. Shoot. Yeah. Anyway, a little bit of derailing my own train of thought there. And anyway, in any case, coming back to this, this book, I realized that the greatness of my work comes before the book itself. And it's not just simply writing the book because anybody can write a book. It's the right book. That's the hard part. And then it's also what comes after that. How do you convert readers into clients, readers into customers? How do you take that book and repurpose its content into courses, coaching, consulting? I'll give you an example of this. We have a, um, a couple of family, marriage and family uh, attorneys that we've ghostwritten and ghost published books for. And they are limited to the states that they practice in for their legal services. But they offer coaching at 2x their hourly rate. And they get it from readers who say, I'm located on the other side of the world, but my attorney's kind of an idiot, or my barrister's kind of an idiot, uh, my solicitor's kind of an idiot, maybe you could uh, guide us through this process here a, a little bit, please? Save us some few hundred thousand <laughs> uh, in the long run, and they're happy to consult uh, on that. But it's because that they wrote, it's because they wrote the right book. So there's multiple upsells and cross-sells. And so that's the, that's the first, gist of this book is number one, I realized I couldn't write the obvious book everyone else did. So what's, right. what's this business about being so good they call you a fake? Some listeners, viewers, might recall a book a little over 10 years ago by Cal Newport called So Good They Can't Ignore You from the Steve mm -hmm. Martin quote that's well known. We have reached a new equilibrium in the economy. Because of the democratization of social, via social media and other technologies, anyone can make it look as though they are unignorable. They can, anyone can make it look like they're good or good enough. And it, usually the people who can spend the most on advertising have the appearance of being the best, even if they're not. Even if the person who charges one-tenth their price gets ridiculously better results, because that person doesn't know how to self-promote well, because they haven't found a way to maximally monetize their expertise, they're charging 10% of what their competitors are, even if their competitors get 
much worse results, but have had a couple of huge wins that put them in a documentary, for example. And so I've realized that my own experiences as a ghostwriter and what people say to me maps well onto this book concept. So what do people say to me? I get this all the time. Joshua, there's no way you wrote that many books. That's not, it's literally humanly impossible. You're a fake. I get that a lot. Clients of mine, I'm gonna hold up. This is a cardiologist named Dr. Philip Ovedi. He's performed over 3,000 heart surgeries. He has a private telehealth clinic. He works with clients one-on-one. And when they post their testimonials or their case studies, what happens? Everyone calls him a quack. They say there's no way that's humanly possible to lose that much weight and improve your numbers that much. You guys are all on TRT, for example, testosterone replacement therapy. You're on steroids. There's no way you can do this. It's obviously fake. And what happens? You, as the subtitle says, command attention. Because attention is influence. And influence is cash money. So if you want cash money, you want influence. If you want influence, you want attention. And if you want attention, your results must be so bombastic relative to the average. You must look insane. You must look like a fake, a fraud, a cheat, and a scam. And that is how you get attention. Perhaps you might say steal attention away from incumbent competitors who are in the magazines and the documentaries and have all the billboards and are spending multiple seven figures a month on advertising. That's how you win. And that is the message of so good they call you a fake. Well, how, how do you, in fact, produce predictable results with consistency for clients that are at such an elite level? And that's what I've been doing my, for my clients for 12 years is producing books for them that get results that are so good the general public and perhaps your envious competitors assume they have to be fake. That's amazing. And and I think that's what we're all trying to do, right, is be our authentic self and show how we are the choice and not a choice and stand out among a very saturated crowd. 